Revelation 1384. From the 16th and 17th of April 1940. Desiring God's Spirit. Love. Light and Wisdom. Desire the Spirit of God in all simplicity and listen to what He announces to you. And take this into your heart. Willingly, obey everything He tells you to do, and thank the Lord God for His great grace that He makes you worthy of His word. So you should spend your life on earth, and it will be pleasing before God. Only who always pays attention to the instructions from above and does not take a step alone without having asked for divine protection, knows how to really live. For the Lord leads him truly and safely and on the right path towards the eternal home. And if you desire the divine spirit, your earthly existence is light and bright, because you know about its purpose. Your thinking will be an orderly one you will strive towards the good, you will start and finish everything with God, because you know God and live to please Him. Therefore your will is the will of God. You have subordinated it to the divine will. And so you approach the eternal Godhead, and earthly life brings you final redemption. But you will not become free if you revile God's spirit, if you do not loosen the fetters and bring liberation to the spirit in you. For the divine spirit can never express itself without man giving his spirit freedom, the light can only shine when it is ignited, and the divine spirit can speak to man when his voice is heeded, so that the spiritual in him is awakened. Spirit must strive for spirit, that is, man must commit himself to the teaching of Christ and follow it, he must be active in love, then his spirit unites with the divine spirit of love. And out of this comes an eternal union, because the love now working in man, loosens all fetters of the divine spirit spark hiding in him, and this now pushes towards his origin, the eternal love spirit. And so all beginnings from now on can have a redeeming effect, that is, the awakened spirit of God urges man to follow the Christian teachings and since these teachings place the commandment of love for God and neighbor above all else, and since love always has a redeeming effect, this must make itself felt in spiritual life, namely in such a way that the union of spiritual power expresses itself in mediations. In wise teachings, where giver and receiver strive towards each other, where both the giver and their receiver are willing to exchange spiritual power, where the receiver gives love and thereby receives love again in increased measure, namely in the form of knowledge. This striving from spirit to spirit is so exceedingly profitable for man. Because only by this he can receive something which cannot be offered to him otherwise. Everything spiritual is accessible to man, if he desires it. But always only by the way of love. Without love, however, access is blocked, and if man wants to acquire wisdom, he will always reject the right and accept the wrong without hesitation, because his senses are still directed by the spirit of unkindness, which is inherent in him. Love, light and wisdom are inseparably connected with each other, and if man is active in love according to the will of God, light and wisdom will likewise be in him, because one is not conceivable without the other and the one whose activity is full of love, will always increase in wisdom, because in the practice of unselfish works of love, he gets in touch more and more with the spiritual, which stands in knowledge and whose love is again exceedingly great. So that it therefore hands out unlimited wisdom to a willing earthly child. If man wants to stand in the brightest light and the right knowledge, if he wants to be taught divine truth, he only has to practice love and send his spirit upwards, and all who are also full of love and full of wisdom, will communicate themselves to the desiring earthly child. The fountain of life will open and be refreshment for those who need strength and nourishment. And so the spiritual in man must try to increase. 
one must flee from the earthly environment and join the spiritual, which has already entered the eternal home. One must seek to reach where one's actual home is. Man must recognize that the actual purpose is not to live earthly life, and therefore fulfill the right purpose. Strive for the union with spiritual perfection, in order to finally be able to unite with the Father Spirit from eternity. Amen.